People are talking. Well, as you know, in the last couple of weeks, the um, United States Supreme Court has handed down some rather controversial decisions. Let's go over uh, four or five of those because we're going to be talking about them this morning. The first one is flag burning. It upholds the First Amendment, the freedom of expression, and allows burning of the American flag. When it comes to affirmative action, it's going to be a little more difficult for plaintiffs to prove discrimination. Right to counsel. Suspected drug dealers must turn over their assets or their assets may be seized before trial even if that prevents them from hiring the lawyer of their choice. On abortion, criteria for abortions is left to each individual state and on the death penalty it ruled that juveniles and mentally retarded adults are eligible for capital punishment under certain circumstances. Some people say this is eroding our individual rights. Others say all the Supreme Court is doing is upholding the Constitution. With us this morning, one of our guests is the former Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court, Rose Byrd. How do you react to these decisions, Rose? Well, I think they reflect the Reagan revolution. Uh, basically, uh, both he and the Attorney General, the then Attorney General Meese, indicated that they wanted some specific changes. Uh, President Reagan was given four appointments on, to the court, and the latest statistics seem to indicate that these individuals vote about 90% of the time together. So you have, for the first time, I think, a strong voting block for changing er areas of civil liberties, civil rights, and uh, the right of privacy of women. Are you concerned? Yes, I am about some of them. I think, for example, it, it's unfortunate, whatever you think about abortion, that the rights, basic right to privacy of a woman should depend on how much money she has and what state she lives in. I think it's unfortunate in a day and age where the majority of people may be uh, of uh, either Asian or Hispanic or, or of the black races, that it's going to be much more difficult for them to find their way in the job market. I think we live in a society where we're retrenching, and unfortunately, we don't seem to in the legislative and executive branches have very much political will to do very much about the problems that we face, whether it's the homeless out in our streets here in California, or whether it's people unable in the middle class to buy a home anymore. Bill McGivern is chief assistant U.S. attorney for San Francisco. You say we don't have anything to worry about. Why not? Well, I think it's uh, very interesting the way so many uh, large and uh, controversial cases have come to fruition in the Supreme Court just within the last month or two. I think it's unusual the way they were all uh, all released at about the same time. So uh, they all build upon each other, and uh, people uh, attempt to see a trend because of that. I think that in every one of these cases, there were extremely complicated issues that had very articulate and uh, very scholarly people arguing on both sides and on both sides they were within the uh, credible part of the political and philosophical spectrum and uh, the the winning side in these cases had uh, some very serious concerns such as in the abortion cases uh, balancing the woman's right is is the very serious fact of uh, the taking of a life of a human being there is a sub-issue is when that uh, fetus becomes a human being but i think there's legitimate concern on the part of, uh, of the people on that, that side of the case that a human being's life is being taken. And because of that, uh, the abortion case got a tremendous amount of, uh, of publicity, as it should have. Uh, so did the affirmative action cases and the flag burning. There were uh, viable arguments on both sides, obviously on the winning side, uh, obviously, and, and not so obviously on the losing side, but uh, because they didn't get as many votes. But both of them had very good arguments. I don't think that you can extrapolate this series of cases into a uh, into an opinion as to how our country is going. I think if you looked years ago at the Warren Court, there were people from the other side, uh, now the winning side, then the losing side, who a lot of dire predictions by the extreme people uh, that the country was drifting into anarchy or communism or whatever. I don't think that was the case then, and I don't think we're drifting into any kind of uh, totalitarian or uh, repressive society so now. So you're, you're not worried. Well, let's ask David Llewellyn. You're president of the Rutherford Institute, which is a conservative think tank here in uh, California. 
Are you worried by these decisions or are you elated by them? Neither worried nor elated, actually. The uh, Supreme Court in 1943 said uh, freedom of speech does not apply to things that don't matter much. You obviously have to apply them to things that, about, people, about which people have uh, very serious and uh, emotionally laden uh, disagreement. Uh, and I think it's impossible to argue that a Supreme Court that upholds free speech as opposed to flag burning is a retrenching conservative and civil rights threatening Supreme Court. It's not. And in the area of abortion, uh, any court which uh, takes the kind of heat this court did and still finds on judicial grounds that a, that a state can protect uh, pre-born life and uh, unborn uh, human beings uh, is certainly risking and, uh, and, and able to take a lot of political pressure and still keep a judicial process going fat properly. All right. Stephanie Salter, columnist for the San Francisco Examiner. How are you responding? Nervously, uh, you know, uh, women's intuition or something, I don't know. Uh, I, I get nervous at five to four, five to four, five to four. Uh, and I get nervous that, uh, as I have been throughout the Reagan era, and uh, this one, that both presidents taking such an active role in lobbying this non-political Supreme Court in their own wonderfully uh, deft ways, that uh, I do see a creeping politicization of the court uh, uh, in subtle ways, and I know that that's one of the things that uh, Justice Scalia was complaining about, uh, whining, one might say, the other day about uh, <laughs> having to deal with all these cards and letters and the heat that they took over the abortion issue. But, uh, but I think in the long run, I worry almost more about about what's happening on that end uh, than, uh, than each individual case. But I think it, it is nervous making that so many of these controversial issues, as Bill said, have come at once. The good part is I've never seen people, at least in the last couple decades, so involved in the, in the judicial process and in the law. And that's, that's at least and a that's And that's yeah. a positive, yeah. Dorothy Ehrlich, Executive Director, Northern California ACLU. Well, I agree with Stephanie. Um, I think on the one hand, we have all, much of the attention has been focused on the Webster decision and on reproductive rights, and I think that's appropriate. I think it's extraordinary that the court has basically sent an open invitation for every state to, to limit, to severely limit the right that women have to reproductive choices. They have also done away f f and, and chipped away in a very significant way at the equality that we as a citizenry believe we have, the qu equality as women, equality as racial minorities, which we thought we had achieved in this country over the last 25 years. And that's been significantly attacked by this current court and this current term of the U.S. Supreme Court. Um, beyond that, it is true that there was one victory, and that was a victory having to that we believe is a victory, and I know it's controversial, because it involves a very controversial act, and that is the notion of burning a flag that I think does offend many people. But what was important about that decision is it said that we still, we still have a right to free speech in this country. And I think as Stephanie said, I hope that that's a call to action, because I think there are things that people can do in response to this term of the U.S. Supreme Court. The Reagan administration really was unable to achieve much of its goals in, the, in, in trying to turn back our rights over the last eight years. But in this session of the U.S. Supreme Court, they did accomplish many of those goals. All of us who care about these issues, I think, have an obligation to go back to Congress, to go to our state legislator, legislators over the next year or two or three and try to reverse these very, very bad decisions. That and we really want you to know rights. that uh, out here in this audience, we have a very bright literate audience here this morning with some views and opinions on these decisions and we'll get those after this commercial break. Stay tuned. Oprah Winfrey's incredible weight loss brought the liquid diet instant fame. But on our next Evening Magazine, just how safe is the new diet millions of Americans are slurping up? There have been patients who have had serious complications that have led to death. Then, the woman America is waking up to the new golden girl of network news, Deborah Norville. Evening Magazine, tonight at 7.30. What's the smart way to find two on the aisle? The Pacific Bell Smart Yellow Pages. So go find it. What's the smart way to get away from it all? I've been searching. The Pacific Bell Smart Yellow Pages. So go find it. 
What's the smart way to get your kicks? I've been searching. The Pacific Bell Smart Yellow Pages. So go find it. Summer's ripe right now at Lucky. Fresh, sweet, juicy, luscious, healthy, delicious. And because it's Lucky, the price is right too. Lucky, still the low price leader. Arrested. Drunk driving. Me. Almost threw myself on the mercy of the court. Then a friend said, don't make a bad mistake worse. Call Jacoby and Myers. I found out that different courts have different, different policies about treatment programs, fines, jail. Jail. Jacoby and Myers has been on your side since 1972. Go to court prepared. Make sure we're your attorney. I got smart. I didn't go to court alone. Go on a walking tour of San Francisco's inner Richmond this Saturday. Call the Foundation for San Francisco's Architectural Heritage for details. Paul, you had a comment. Well, uh, it was about the flag burning. I, I can't disagree with the decision because it, it, it makes sense, but it bothers me because... I was a, a, a veteran, and uh, you give up a lot of civil rights when you're in the service. Later on, you know, when you're thousands of miles away from home, the only thing you got that's tangible is the flag. You don't have anything else in front of you. I, we, I was safe in Germany. I wasn't in Vietnam, but I was giving up things. My wife was giving up things, and it was the only thing left. Uh, and I worry about the guys that have to do it today because they, they won't even have that. How do you respond to that? court was approving of burning the flag. I think sometimes that's misinterpreted. They weren't saying it's okay. They were saying that it is, it has expressive value, that it is um, so provocative, that it makes people so angry, that surely that is symbolic expression that must be protected by the First Amendment. What's frightening is now President Bush, who didn't even bother to file a brief in the case, who didn't even get involved, completely ignored it, now wants to actually change the First Amendment to the Constitution for the first time in almost 200 years of history to to whittle away at that right, just to prevent that kind of provocative action. Stella. Every, every guy who's up for re-election is also jumping on the bandwagon, and that goes back to this politicization of these of these laws that worries me, because, I mean, politicians, heaven knows, know uh, an opportunity when they see one, and this one, because it is so emotional, and because people do feel strongly and deeply, and rightly the way you do, um, I just, uh, it's not maybe the best motive sometimes on the people who are now going to be on your side to help. Uh, Stella. Well, I think the priorities are off. People care more about a piece of fat fabric than they do about human lives right now. But it's now. more than a piece of fabric. It's a symbol. Well, anything can be a symbol. And why not make the flag out of asbestos? That's why, why everyone will be satisfied. <laughs> I, think, I think one of the problems here is that it will be used politically, I think, to divert people's attentions from real issues. I think is, you, is the substance of what you're saying. That in, in fact, what we'll be doing is electing people based on how they feel about uh, burning the flag, rather than how they feel about childcare, how they feel about the environment and the despoiling of it, how they feel about the fact that our children aren't getting the kinds of educations they need, the fact that uh, we live in a society where we're losing our middle class. We don't talk about that, and when we elect people on a symbol as opposed to issues, we lose our power as voters because they go in with no agendas then. They Tammy. can do whatever they like. Tammy. Uh, flag is one thing that, it, in this, you know, on this United States that we should respect. Another one is a judge. A judge demands respect, and if we can, you know, step on the flag and burn the flag, then in a courtroom, there... It, Burning a flag is free speech, then can we talk back to a judge? I disagree with your, you know, well, I, I, <laughs> he'll I throw that, you out. I, I think that it's, it didn't prohibit the burning of a flag. The, the burning of the flag has to be connected with an expression, an expressive act. So I think the decision is a little narrower. I mean, people aren't just going to go out and burn flags for no reason at all. Why not, now that they have the freedom to do so? Well, I, I don't know that the decision went that far. It talked in terms of expressive acts in, 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 in uh, using your First Amendment rights as a part of, of, your, of your free speech, intertwined with your free speech. Uh, I, 
I think the decision was limited to that. I also think that the current furor is not going to last all that long, and I, and I don't know how long the, uh, either the administration or the Congress or the states are going to go. Do you think that politicians are wrapping themselves, as maybe Stephanie said before and, and Dorothy, in the flag to stave off these other issues? I mean, it's great to talk I, about the American flag. You look like a true American. Well, I'm not sure why they're doing it, but I'm not sure how long it's going to be front page news either. Do you know what I think an awful lot of people worry about is, gee, if we desecrate the flag and then we don't pay attention to judges and then we call our policemen pigs. I mean, all the areas of respect in this country seem to have been kind of whittled away at. I mean, what do we hold dear? What do we hold sacred in this country anymore? And how do we teach our children to respect a flag that they see somebody can burn? How do we teach a ch our children to respect the law? I mean, if, it, if it, you make the flag out of asbestos, you probably solve the problem because then if you wrap yourself in the flag, you'll die from asbestos poisoning. Right. <laughs> but the part of the problem is what does the flag symbolize? Does yeah. it symbolize the First Amendment and freedom of speech? Does it symbolize the resilience of the country uh, to be able to absorb some highly inflammatory rhetoric? Uh, to protect ourselves. I mean, there's, there's just a handful, a tiny, minuscule number of people who actually want to do this. Uh, but once you start si silencing them, what about people who me, like me, who want to speak out vocally for pro-life? Are you going to start saying, no, 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 that's, you know, it's a constitutional right, therefore limit my freedom of speech? Or under inter international human rights law, uh, many states, uh, governments, prohibit uh, speeches in favor of war. Are you going to permit that kind of limitation on freedom of speech? Our history has been to absorb that kind of speech, even though it's highly repulsive, and usually has the effect, probably even on this audience, of making other Americans more loyal, more patriotic, and more committed to the country. You know, when President uh, Reagan appointed these members to the Supreme Court, I, well, did he appoint three or four? Four, if four. Uh, four in, in his eight years. Uh, we were told they were not asked their Issues. personal views. Supposedly, on, we did not know their political beliefs. They. Um, they were there just to uphold the Constitution. I think a lot of us fear, and maybe on the abortion issue, for an example, that they voted on their personal belief, how they felt about abortion, rather than on the legal beliefs. Is that possible? How do you, I mean, I, I, not you know, me, when you have, a, just, when yeah, you have a talk show and nobody talks, you're in trouble. Well, we're, we're thoughtful people. We're very thoughtful. No, I mean, how do you, in a, in a sense, how do you, uh, it's sort of like the objectivity of the press. How do you separate, when it really comes down to it, the person from their knowledge of law? Yes, they go as far as they possibly can with their knowledge of the law, and I'm sure Rose Bird certainly knows a lot more about this than I do, but that eventually who you are has to color uh, your decision, and so what? I mean, that, that means you're an individual. Every single person is different. You can't be this machine stamping out whatever, and I think that the So, unlike what the president was saying, they were appointed because of maybe their personal beliefs to overturn. It's an ideology thing rather than a legal. Well, I, I think the intertwining is what everybody has said here, and you have to look at those four people who were appointed were eminently qualified. They were all extremely scholarly, uh, successful in their career, and they weren't appointing ideologues. The Democrats are going to appoint Democratic people. The Republicans are going to sure. appoint Republicans. I don't think in any of those cases you have someone who's some kind of a zealot. So they upheld the Constitution. They interpreted it to be against abortion in the sense of giving it back to the states. Well, I, th I think that there is a, a sense, though, that at least when you look at how many decisions are coming out the same, these five to four decisions, that there is this e e ideological block. And that's something that we were not expecting. And it's something that's so more prominent than anyone anticipated that there's a feeling that they're not just looking at the law and neutrally interpreting the Constitution. Well, Scalia has there's... said that he wants to overturn Roe versus Wade. That's I mean, right. that was in the paper. But not I want to see that overturned. But not because of his personal ideology. Of the law. But Robert, you sure? Bork, Robert Bork, of all people, said on McNeil Lair last night, this is a very political Supreme Court. That's scary coming from Robert Bork. And, and it's an activist court. It's not simply a court that's just interpreting the law. People have always condemned previous courts for being activists, for not just looking at the law, but for writing new laws and 
and, and that's what they're always criticizing, what they consider liberal courts for. But this it, at least appears to be the most activist court. That's what's very contradictory. And I think that's what we're going to have to watch out for. I think it also shows uh, almost a legislative tendency. And that is you don't overrule Roe versus Wade, but you've got it. And then you overrule it. So in other you, words, you don't they're overrule. legislating and they're not, they're well, just the legal arm. You don't overrule the civil rights statutes. You uphold them, but you gut them by making them so narrow that they basically are no longer of very much use. I would much prefer a court, and I think that's what Brennan and, uh, and um, Blackman in their dissents are saying that perhaps the court is not being as forthright. And Scalia even has indicated that in the, in the Roe case. And we'll be right back. Now you can get the great taste of sunshine with no cholesterol. There's absolutely no cholesterol in virtually all of Sunshine's cookies and crackers. Have a little sunshine. No cholesterol at all. Have a little sunshine. At Casa Marin, our annual midsummer sale is on now. Make home furnishing fantasies come true with $2,500 savings on this Henredon sectional. Or save over $3,600 on this Baker dining room. Fantasies do come true at Casa Marin. And our professional design staff will help. Save over $1,200 on this bedroom from Henredon. And up to 40% store-wide on furnishings from Drexel Heritage, Henredon, and Baker. The midsummer sale where home furnishing fantasies come true. Casa Marin, 2nd Street, San Rafael. This sound engineer is recording an ordinary bottle of carbonated water after it's been open a week. Pretty flat, huh? Now, here's Alhambra seltzer that's also a week old. Still fizzy. That's because Alhambra seltzer has a unique spritzer top that locks in carbonation. It keeps the spritz bubbling to the bottom so the taste is always crisp and delicious. And now with the new improved bottle and reusable spritzer top, the Alhambra spritz never quits. Sparklets by Alhambra. Rancher's Choice is made with fresh buttermilk. The other is made with dehydrated buttermilk. Which would you prefer? Try Rancher's Choice from Kraft. The one real choice. Enjoy Kentucky Fried Chicken's new summer deal. Ten pieces of original recipe chicken, mashed potatoes and gravy, large coleslaw, four buttermilk biscuits, just $11.99. The summer fun pack at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Join us in our studio audience. For your free tickets, call 478-KPIX. That's 478-KPIX. Kimberly. Um, yes, I, one of the panelists had talked about how well he felt that the Supreme Court handled the heat from abortion. And um, I don't feel that way. I feel they wimped out on us. And they turned right around and handed it to the states. And I'm really upset. I'm a resident of Florida. And our governor, Bob Martinez, has already called for a reconvening of the justices there and our legal bodies because he wants to immediately tighten the laws on it. And does that mean that what's going to make the difference is if you have enough money to drive to a state where they have a Democratic Party or someone who is pro, um, for pro -li or pro choice, I mean? That's a good point, Kimberly. Well, I think, I think the decision was a little narrower than that. It held that two of the Missouri restrictions were reasonable restrictions. It didn't go, I think, go so far as to say that a state can, uh, can provide unreasonable or very restrictive restrictions. But what's unreasonable? What are the Well, we're going to find out. <laughs> the Supreme Which could be what? Which could end up being? only thing they said you couldn't do, and they're this close to saying you can, is to criminalize it. You were absolutely right. And it only, the only question now is you have reproductive rights, or you will have reproductive rights, according to what state you live in, and whether you have a checkbook and can travel. That seems fundamentally unfair. It's not the question just of whether there ought to be a right to choose, but there will be a right to choose, or there should be in some states. It's going to be unfairly applied, and poor people, women of color, are going to suffer as a result of these decisions, and they truly are going to suffer. But also, I think there's an additional danger in that the courts seem to hold that if... Uh, Birth begin, uh, if uh, birth begins at conception, 
you then can begin to narrow also your uh, rights to contraception. And I think eventually you may get into the right of privacy under Griswold. And that, I think, and is And you should explain hard. here, Griswold. It's Griswold versus Connecticut in 1965, folks. It was against the law in the state of Connecticut, Connecticut. for married couples to use contraception. Oh. It was against the law to use contraception. So now, talking? they didn't come into your house and check, but... <laughs> Well, you couldn't go to the drugstore and buy it, I assume, well, over the, the counter. Supreme, the Supreme Court used Griswold to create a right of privacy which is not written in but, the Constitution. But Rose is what I think Rose is saying. We could get back to Griswold. We're going there. I think we could, it's abortion now, and it's going to be birth control next, unless it's the rhythm method, and they well, call those people parents. That's, that's a slippery slope kind of argument. What, all the Supreme Court did this time was say that the uh, the fiat, the the judicial legislation which the court did in Roe versus Wade in creating a constitutional right to an abortion uh, uh, now should be turned back to the states. However, if the electorate wants to have this right, they can, they can create one by federal law. But you should create it by electorate using their elected representatives to do so and not by having a uh, nine judges say that you cannot do this because we say the Constitution says it when it's not written there. Christine. Um, well, what I, what I was going to say was kind of already brought up before, but I think it's interesting in that I thought that this was a right that we all held. And now, like you said, because of these nine judges, everything's getting changed. And more interesting also is that it's not really a pro-life issue. It hasn't, like, even though it's supposedly pro-life, it's gone in that direction. But actually, it's just made it less accessible to the poor people. And now it's a matter of money in the back alleys and women dying. And it really hasn't decided anything except it's a step in the wrong direction. Well, it makes it like women have freedom to all parts of their body except their wombs, and that belongs to the government for some odd reason. It's, it's a very strange feeling. We've so somehow been segmented I think by it's this. It's also interesting that uh, she brought up Florida that, I mean, I'm always fascinated that the people like the governor of Florida aren't out with so much zeal at, uh, at capital punishment. I mean, this incredible right or, to it, life, right to life. Or drugs. And that, and, coming into the but wherever there's wherever there's inhumanity to man, or wherever there is indeed the taking of a life by the state, but uh, it, it's it's only protection for the unborn. Mark, I've uh, posed a question to a pro-lifer. I asked her what happened. God forbid, if you were raped by a man um, who was who was on drugs or whatever, and you would you make the decision to have the baby or not? And she hasn't spoken to me since. So I, I find this hypocritical. So you don't have of, the answer to that question. I don't have the answer. And she wouldn't give me the answer. She hasn't spoken to me. Um, but I think it's going to put a terrible drain on our economy also, as you have uh, the, these pro-lifers who, who want to keep children that are unwanted. Someone's going to have to take care of them. It's going to, going to be the state. David, can't, perhaps being pro-life, you can answer that. Obviously, uh, the state does have responsibility, and all of us share responsibility for taking care of all of our children. Uh, but you shouldn't discriminate on the basis of taking care of the unborn, uh, not taking care of the unborn children, and killing them, rather than taking responsibility to care for them, or taking public ed education responsibility to see that uh, children, unwanted children, are not conceived in the first place. Uh, there is there's nothing intrinsically uh, uh, anti-life in a position that says that you protect uh, people from before birth rather than simply protecting them after they're born. If you, if you kill a 24-week fetus uh, in the womb, that's, that's a constitutional right. If you kill a 24-week uh, uh, born child in a neonatal ward, that's murder. Uh, or if you, uh, if you kill a, a, an adult who's pregnant, you can get the death penalty for killing two people. There's inconsistency in the law already on this point, and we're saying protect uh, the unborn you know, from the moment of conception or as early as it's possible to protect them. And we'll be back in a moment. Today's X-Lax is a good morning, guaranteed. Good morning. Good morning. Medical experts agree. X-Lax actually restores the level of natural fluid in your system. Good morning. X-Lax, the sure way back to natural regularity, guaranteed. Only one of the Lutz twins uses Fruit Fresh. It has vitamin C to help keep fruit looking like the minute it was picked. So she'll always win the blue ribbon. Or will she? For canning, freezing, or serving fresh, use Fruit Fresh. See this bag? It does the impossible. It's the microwave cooking bag that comes with the new microwave ad meat dinners called Hunt's Minute Gourmet. It makes great homemade dinners without the work. You want chicken cacciatore? Just add fresh chicken, along with Hunt's home-style sauce. All in the bag, then simmer in the microwave. Mmm, tender and delicious. There's oriental beef, Cajun pork, and more. 
Hunt's Minute Gourmet, Taste the Impossible, homemade dinners without the work. <laughs> unusual. Highly unusual. <laughs> Why the unusual public reaction to Tropicana Twister? It's not in the natural scheme of things. Tropicana Twister, flavor combinations Mother Nature never dreamed of. Deliciously tempting. We avoid temptation. Exciting. Weird. Flavors like orange, strawberry, banana. Sounds pretty good. Put it out of your mind. Tropicana Twister. Flavors Mother Nature never intended, but should have. It's from aliens. I see them. Pack and save. Pack and save is back. Pack and save opens an all-new store with a whole lot more in South San Francisco. Come shop a bigger and better produce department, a customer service deli, a fresh fish market, a full-line pharmacy, a fresh hot bakery, and an in-store floral shop, and the lowest food prices in town. Come save again. Come shop it all. Pack and save is now open 24 hours a day. It's a whole Pack and save. You can't get groceries for less. You know, it's so easy to believe in your kids when they've done something right. But the true test of your love and faith is to believe in them when they've done something wrong. Can you imagine the possibilities? We're looking for a few good men. The bold, the proud, the outspoken. If you're a man who can talk honestly about fidelity, we want you. We're planning a special show with an all-male audience to tell women what it takes to keep a man monogamous. Whether you're a guy who's strayed into the arms of another woman or found that faithfulness is the key to a great relationship, we want to hear from you. So pick up the phone and give us a call at 478-KPIX, which is also the number to call to reserve your free tickets to the hottest TV show in town. Don't wait another moment. Call us now. Laura. Yes, to direct back to what you're saying is about the right for the unborn child, we need to take the right back to the woman because no matter what, it's her, it needs to be her choice because they're going to be going out somewhere else and getting it done illegally. They could, their death rate is going to be a lot higher, not even the helping of the child that's going to be here. The government's have to take over the child. But what about that woman who's out there going through emotional pain who might commit murder on her, on her kill herself i mean kill herself instead of having an abortion it needs to be her right i don't think any government should be able to take that right away and we're talking about freedom of each individual and that's that's the number one choice and then you can't take that freedom away from women and shouldn't we be concerned about the children we've already brought into the world shouldn't we be concerned about the children that are homeless the children that are on the streets the children that don't have good parents shouldn't we be concerned about those that are living before we get concerned about those that are just perhaps a glint in well, their daddy's eye but they're not a glint if they were only a glint you could control glints yeah but the protection why should you just but a glint can't live outside i think the womb one we're talking about living we're talking about people uh, we're talking about young people brought into this world that are unwanted. Rose, you had a comment? Yes, I, I think one of the problems this points up in terms of putting this into the political dialogue is that people do not speak to the same issue. To women, it becomes a right to privacy, whatever you think about abortion, and how the state will dictate to you as to what you can do and can't do with your body. So it becomes a fundamental right of a woman vis-a-vis -vis the state and what it can say to her. To others, it becomes an issue of, of the life of a fetus. So you're talking at cross pur purposes, and you never really have a dialogue. You simply have a pulling and tugging, which uh, I think it's a mistake for the Supreme Court to invite this kind of pulling and tugging when it appears to indicate that down the line they're going to over overrule Roe versus that, Wade anyway. That goes into the politi politicization again of what, what scares me. I read a, a, a quote from Molly Yard of National Organization for Women right after the decision and, and she said, you know, it's now we've got to, we have to tell everybody who's running for elected office, uh, we're going to find out, are you pro-choice or aren't you? And I, a chill ran through me at the idea that what if like, you know, the biggest creep in the world who I disagree with on every single issue, but he's smart enough to say I'm pro-choice and, and, and I've got to back this. this guy because this is my only, only recourse to keep uh, abortion safe and legal in the particular state I live in. And that really scares me for the future. Jennifer. I'd like to know how a group of people can decide on what's right for me 
And I just feel like my rights are being taken away, not only as a woman, but as a U.S. citizen. And it really frightens me because it seems like we're going back in time, not only in an abortion, but a lot of other things. Let, let me respond to that because there, your rights don't have to be taken away. It seems to me that what's important, and I think what lesson comes out of all this, is that we cannot be complacent about our rights, that every person really has a responsibility to try to take some action to protect their rights. And here in California, for instance, there is a constitutional right to choose an abortion. There is a, absolutely a constitutional right to privacy that is greater than the right to privacy under the U.S. federal constitution. We are going to work to protect that right, as are many other organizations over the coming months. months. We're going to be contacting legislators to ensure that they protect the constitutional right to choose and that they ensure that women continue to have a right to choose an abortion regardless of wealth. Um, it's really a fight that everybody has a responsibility to engage in, so we shouldn't just sit by and say, gee, look what the court's doing. We have to do something about it, and there are things we can do. Ken. Yes, you said the Supreme Court came out with the ruling that uh, mentally retarded people are can be subject to capital punishment and I don't think it's right because I've worked with mentally retarded people and they don't understand fully what they do when they do do something wrong so if some one of them would to go out and to kill so now you're saying because they didn't fully understand what they did we're gonna kill them. But I don't think that's what the Supreme Court said Ken they what they really said was that uh, in certain circumstances, people with some mental defects could be executed. However, you would still have to meet the constitutional requirements of uh, that they had that they were legally seen, that they did not have a mental a legal standard, a mental defect. They would have to be aware of the charges against them, aware of what they did. There's a legal standard for competency to stand trial, and they would still have to meet that. But well, the let's court take a did say that in this case, in the particular case they ruled on that a person with a seven-year-old mentality could be executed. And if you look at what the court did, in essence, uh, contrasted with uh, juveniles, where they said a 16-year-old and on up could be executed, but a 14-year-old could not. A 14-year-old chronologically cannot, but a seven-year-old mind can. And I think that seems to me very inconsistent. And it has to be so confusing to so many people that we don't want to take a life at one end, but we're willing to take a life at the other end. It, we'll be so back confusing. after this. Stay tuned. London, and I read something that convinced me that Beech Nut Stages baby food is the best. They're labels. I became a Beech Nut mother because only Beech Nut Stages has unique quality ingredients like Chiquita bananas and Regal Imperial carrots. I wanted only the very best for our daughter. And no modified tapioca starch like you'll find in other leading brands. So give your baby Beech Nut Stages the right food at the right stage. Compare labels yourself. There is a difference with Beech Nut Stages. <laughs> Only one detergent has Clorox Color Safe Bleach to help turn up the clean. Introducing Clorox Detergent. Turn up the clean from Bingy to White. Turn it up from Dog to Bright. Clorox Detergent Game. Turn up the clean. Unlike ordinary detergents, it has Clorox Color Safe Bleach. It gets everything you wash. Brighter, whiter, clean. Fifty years ago, we at Foster Farms found the ideal city to locate our business. It has a large shipping port, major transportation corridors, and plenty of office space. But most importantly, it's located in the center of California, allowing us to deliver our fresh chicken anywhere in the state within a day. 
all-natural Foster Farms. Delivered fresh daily from downtown Livingston. Join us in our studio audience. For your free tickets, call 478-KPIX. That's 478-KPIX. My name is Eugene Morris Jerome, which happens, happens to be the second worst name in history. Come join the extended family of Jacob Jerome for liver and cabbage in Brighton Beach. North Valley players will be performing Neil Simon's Brighton Beach Memoirs opening Friday, July 14th at 8 p.m. with the Champagne Gala opening night. Tickets are $7.50. Remaining performances will be on Friday the 21st and 28th, and Saturdays, July 15th, 22nd, and 29th at 8 p.m. Tickets are $5 reserved and $6 at the door. Performances are held in the City Council Chambers at Milpitas City Hall. For more information, call 942-6870. Okay, David, I know you wanted to do a follow-up as we went to a commercial break. Just 30 seconds. You, you can't reasonably equate innocent, unborn human life with the lives of people who have willfully committed murders of other individuals. I don't think you're, you're comparing apples and oranges. All right, done. Okay, what I was stating, um, or was my feeling, regarding uh, mentally retarded people, the death penalty. If people like, I don't know if I get in trouble saying it, Stan White does not go to the gas chamber because he ate Twinkies, and yet you're trying to take mentally retarded people and my well i have to with the minors i mean some of them are 16 years old they know what they're doing but as far as mentally retarded but it doesn't seem fair to you some people get it some fair. people don't if they have a good lawyer they're going to get off if they don't have a good lawyer or politics is involved which most of the time it is with someone yeah. off. mia I was thinking um, in regards to capital punishment for 16-year-olds, I think a lot of them know exactly what they're doing, and they like to take advantage of the system because they think, well, I'll just get put somewhere to be rehabilitated, then I'll get out. And they just take advantage of it, I think. So you think this might be a deterrent to crime? Yeah. So you think a 16-year-old actually thinks about that before they commit a crime? There is that, no evidence that 16-year-olds do think I about I mean, that. they actually know oh, no what the law is yeah, and right, I can blow right. this person away because uh, what are they going to do to me? Danny, come on, stand up. Yeah. Well, I think 16-year-olds definitely know what they're doing, and there's, there's so many drugs out, and that's the way they protect. They go out and carry guns, and gun control is not going to help that. They know they have a gun. They know they can shoot someone. They know they're going to go to juvenile hall for a few days. They're going to have their lawyer. They're going to be out, and they can do it all over again. Mike. Well, then, if we can get equal punishment, don't you think we should get equal rights? Because, I mean, if you can charge, if you can kill someone, if you can execute someone who's 16 because they committed a murder, then shouldn't someone who's 16 have equal rights? Or the right to vote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least. Well, I think you develop different capacities at different times in your life. I think you have to be prevented from killing somebody, and you might not have the capacity to make an intelligent voting decision, or to drink, or to drive. Abby. There, there, there are different levels for all kinds of things in life. Abby. Well, a 16-year-old, I mean, they can commit murder and they will know it's wrong because as a 5-year-old, I mean, I knew murder was wrong. I mean, everyone knows what's wrong and it's not their age, it's what they know and they know it was wrong. So they, they deserve capital punishment if that's what they're going to do. They're still going to get trialed by a jury, too. It's not like just because they're 16 and they committed a murder, they're going to, you know, get get killed, there's still going to be a jury in the same kind of Stella. legislator. Well, excuse me, but it's been proven that capital punishment is not a deterrent to crime. If it were, people wouldn't still be committing crimes. I mean, people don't... But it's a deterrent for that person. Well, yeah, but I mean, it doesn't keep other people from committing crimes, and it's just an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, that's the old adage, but it just doesn't work. Can I just Thank say, you. earlier, um, you mentioned that it's apples and oranges when you talk about this innocent life and this... this not this um, convicted life and it's not apples and oranges because really what we're talking about is what the government does in our name and also how much power are we going to give the government are we going to give the government the power to determine whether or not we bear children are we going to give the government the power of life and death and life and death over mentally retarded people as well as young people the the problem with this is there's no even south africa doesn't have a law in the books to execute teenagers and to execute the mentally retarded this puts us out of line with western civilization I think it's something that we really have to condemn as a society because it speaks very... Well, how did this come about? Why in the world would we bring <coughs> this up? Why would we pass a law like this? I don't think we... Pa we didn't I pass know. a law. I think what happened is um, 
there were people who were convicted of crime, and, and this was the facts in those cases. There have been a few states already who are contemplating legislation to ban the execution of mentally retarded. Even the state of Georgia has passed such a law. It is, it is something that's being considered by state legislatures. Many people are in favor of the death penalty, and, 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 we're, and I'm aware of that and understand that. But most people actually are somewhat appalled by the notion of giving the government the power to execute mentally retarded people, and some people are appalled also by teenagers. It just goes too far, and I think a lot of people are coming around on this issue, and a lot of state legislators are actually willing to look at legislation and, to prevent that from happening. And David, I know you want to say something, but we got a commercial break at home. Please know it is not a political view of mine, and I take commercial <laughs> breaks at opportune times. No, we got to do it. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> When I was young, my big sister taught me everything. Like how to share. How to accept responsibility. The art of self-defense. And over the years, we learned a lot about each other, too. The people at Pacific Bell would like to remind you, don't drift away. Hey, you. I hear you did great. I learned from the best. I won't drift away. What's a wallaroo, mate? What's a wallaroo? It's the taste that's right for you. That's a wallaroo. Wallaroo is a light, refreshing juice drink made with pure Australian sparkling spring water and real fruit juices and exotic down under flavours like orange passion fruit and orange mango. And Wallaroo's spring water and fruit juice taste is not too sweet. It's a natural. It's the taste that's right for you. Australian sparkling spring water and real fruit juice. Say, that's a wallaroo. Some ladies don't get dressed until July. I love this dress. Look at this beautiful sweater. Because July means a clearance sale at Pretty and Plump. Ooh, this skirt is 50% off. And the ladies go crazy. I want all these blouses. So if you want the best price... Look, 50% off. ...on the finest Pretty and Plump fashions... That's mine. I saw it first. Better hurry. Got it. Because you don't want to miss the excitement of the July clearance sale at Pretty and Plump. Hi, I'm Claudine St. Clair of KJOY Radio, here to tell you about the Jenny Craig Weight Loss Program. On Jenny's program, everything was planned for me. I lost 18 pounds in just six weeks, and I've kept the weight off for over a year. At Jenny Craig, we not only help you lose weight, we teach you how to keep it off. We help Claudine St. Clair of KJOY Radio lose weight and improve her confidence. We'd like to do that for you, too. Call now and lose all the weight you want for only a $185 service fee. Jenny's cuisine not included. For information about today's guests, call the People Are Talking hotline at 478-8888. Are you tired of dieting? Shapers Nutrition and Weight Management Program is an innovative way to lose weight permanently. Dieting typically sets us up for an all-or-nothing syndrome on and off a diet. As Shapers, you'll learn that it's easier to be a better manager rather than a better dieter, so you can get it off and keep it off once and for all. Shapers is offered at 12 Kaiser locations starting tonight in South San Francisco and Saturday morning in San Francisco. Call to register for either classes or for any other of our ongoing class schedules. Open for all ages, including non-Kaiser members. Okay, Bill, you wanted 10 seconds, and then Carol's bursting over here. I heard, just heard a couple of statements that uh, accepted it as, as almost a scientific fact that the deterrent theory of punishment does not work. I would like to say that there is a very definitely another side to that, and there's a substantial group of people that do believe that it does work. All and, right. and it's not been, quote, proven. Carol. Yes, I can see us going back to the 60s, really, with marches out in the street, and... Um, where does that put the women and the minorities as far as looking for work now? Affirmative action. Are we going to have to go out in the street and pick it? And what? Are we going to, Rose, going to have to be out in the streets picketing for... Well, I think the problem is, is that what the court basically did was to make the standard so difficult of proof when you do find discrimination in the workplace that it's almost impossible to find relief in that area. And uh, unless you get additional laws passed and, and get Congress to act again, I think it's going to be difficult. I think this is one of the problems we have, is that we have a society in which women have to get out into the workplace. Minorities have to have a, an opportunity 
for the American dream as well. And the problem is we're getting an hourglass economy where we have a shrinking middle class and a larger and larger underclass and, and a number of people at the top. And we don't hear any discussion of this. Maybe through the cutbacks that the Supreme Court has done in civil rights, it will activate people to get out and begin to talk about the American dream and what's happened to it. And one last thing, right to counsel, suspected drug dealers. Their assets can be seized so they can't go out and hire these high-priced attorneys. That's a great idea, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? So you're guilty before you're proven? I mean, you're proven guilty before, uh, isn't it innocent before guilty? I'm not sure. How does that work? You're innocent before you're proven guilty. <laughs> yeah, but they reversed it. Aren't you? Do you have a comment on this? Okay, sir. Um, how will it be determined whether they got their money through illicit means? And also, is this, was this just about drug dealers or was it about people who got their money through illegal means in general? This one was about... This one was about drug dealers, and it's proven in an independent proceeding that the money itself was either the product of, uh, of drug dealing or was uh, used to, well, it was the product of, of drug dealing. Yes. But it's, it's an independent proceeding. It's a statute that's been upheld by the Supreme Court. It's a civil proceeding. But prior to the trial, probable cause must be shown that this money was used for narcotics dealing. The problem is you do get a lawyer. It's paid for by the taxpayers rather than you pay for it yourself. Mm -hmm. The second problem is that once again, the courts are allowing the state to determine who your lawyer is going to be. And I think the most important thing to come out of this morning is maybe yesterday when we talked about the abortion uh, ruling is that we all got to get out and vote. And care. Thank you all for being with us yeah. this morning. Ann and I'll be right back. Stay tuned. Ah, the virtues of milk. Milk helps supply carbohydrates. Hey there! Whoa!